So Tesla EVs can now do vehicle to home, V2X, and in some places vehicle to grid as well. Well, and we've been waiting for this for quite a long time. I've done videos showing engineers, proving that they can work for this. But um, now we know, actually, people are using their Teslas in both Europe, the United States, and Australia for, well, powering their houses and sometimes even powering the grid. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Here in Australia, things are a little bit different to the United States and to Europe and all the rest of the world. But um, we, we know that governments around the world, they want vehicle to grid. They want people to be able to soak up all the excess solar being generated during the day, which is happening in many countries around the world, and then put that extra power surplus that they have that they don't necessarily need put it back into the grid between 5 to 9 p.m in the evenings when energy use is at its highest and therefore it's most expensive and that's when the grid often struggles that's when you if you're going to get a blackout when you've got to get the power turn itself off that's when it will happen so governments want this to happen but tesla doesn't really want it to happen they haven't approved it but i can tell you now that people in the us australia and europe are using their teslas to power their homes or even to power their homes and the grid. Here in Australia, vehicle to grid has been approved. And we've learned that um, Tesla's work for charging, well, not only your home, but also the grid. If you've got the right charger, you just need the right charger and then you can actually do it. So Melbourne, there's a few people doing it. In Brisbane, there's a few people doing it. I've met people. People come up to me and said, hey, Sam, um, don't tell anyone, but I'm using my Tesla to make money. Uh, powering the grid. It works. It's amazing. And this has happened to me a few, a few times now. And I'm like, mate, I'm going to tell everyone, you know that. They're like, yeah, of course, I know you're going to tell everyone. So, <laughs> so, you know, here it is. But in the US, this actually is legal. In the US, Tesla vehicles are now capable of bidirectional charging or V2X, thanks to a Powerwall competitor, SIG Energy, which can include a universal bidirectional DC charger. So, Australia, we've been using this bi-directional DC charger from SIG Energy, and it works here in Australia. But clearly, it also works in the United States as well. V2X, or bi-directional charging, is becoming a common feature for vehicles. But most manufacturers aren't putting out a warranty for doing this. I think General Motors does have a warranty for this. But yeah, I mean, Nissan does too, which is wild. But most car manufacturers haven't yet warranted their cars for vehicle to grid. People are just doing it anyway because there's no real way for these manufacturers to know that you've been doing it. So is it a good idea to do vehicle to grid or V2X or vehicle to home? Um, well, yeah. I mean, hell yeah. You can make money. Batteries last far longer than I think the average EV car. How many people are going to own an EV for... 400,000 plus kilometers. I don't think it's very likely many of you will do that. And even then, batteries, I think, will more than likely keep lasting. If they don't, just go get it repaired. Probably a couple of cells that are faulty and get them repaired. It's actually not that difficult. Anyway, Tesla has not really embraced vehicle to grid. They've been, well, they said they would. In fact, Tesla said this year they would approve it. I don't think it's happening. There is one Tesla, though, that does do it. The Tesla Cybertruck. So the bi-directional charging on the Cybertruck is legit, it works, but Tesla's other cars don't have that same ability. But with Tesla's own PowerShare home solution, well, it has some issues. But Electric says that Sylvain Juto, Juto I don't know how to pronounce his name, sorry, Sylvain, the president of Roulet's Electric, he has revealed that the SIG Energy DC charging system actually works. Now, the SIG Energy system has two different options. You can get an 11 kilowatt bidirectional charger, uh, which is plenty of power, but you can also get a 22 kilowatt version. So that's pretty cool. Of course, you need to have the right EV capable of charging at 22 kilowatt on AC. And that's going to be a consideration whether or not you want to pay the extra money. It's a few thousand dollars more to get the 22 kilowatt version. Now, here's the thing with the SIG Energy system, you base, what you do is you basically buy the battery and it's integrated with an inverter, and also there's a charger that's integrated with it as well. 
So you do have to buy the battery add-on. However, you don't have to buy a big battery. So you can buy a small battery. The battery is really kind of just the interface. So you can get up to a five, only a five kilowatt hour battery, which will do the job. And realistically, if you're using vehicle to grid, you probably don't need a huge battery because you're using your car. And your car might have a battery that's say 60 to 100 kilowatt hours in size, which is massive. SIG Energy's device can, well, basically it combines all components into a single stackable and expandable system with a, an impressive user face. And basically you have these modules between them. You can fit the new bi-directional DC charger module and actually basically start making money by sending electricity straight to the grid. Of course, you do need to get approved by the grid in your location. Uh, but it, alternatively, you don't even have to do that. You can just power your own house all the time if you want to. Now, how does this actually work? And why can it work in Tesla vehicles when Tesla vehicles don't even have a vehicle to load? Well, the system bypasses the onboard charge in your EV, just like public DC fast charging stations. And actually, it can you can get a charger that's up to 25 kilowatts. Sorry, I was wrong before. It's not 22, it's 25 kilowatt. Meaning if you want to put power back into the grid really fast, for example, let's say the electricity spike, the cost of electricity spikes at say six or seven or 8 p.m. and it just spikes for say 30 minutes to an hour. You want to put a whole bunch of power into the grid so you can put 22 kilowatt into the grid. You might be able to make yourself $50 or something like that a day, which actually adds up and it's tax free. Then um, this is a really good way of actually going about it. Now apparently the device is available, is available with both CCS and Tesla NAX converters called connectors, I should say. So yeah, I'm not sure 100% about, about it being usable in the United States, but Electric have put out an article saying they believe that it is. So that'll be quite interesting to see. Here's the thing though, it is a bit hit and miss. Apparently the company that has tested it, they have said they've done it with Ford's EVs and Tesla's uh, and General Motors. They said with Ford's EVs, it works flawlessly. They found that in Australia and the United States. They did say that General Motors vehicles are very hard to make it work with the DC charger. So if you've got a GM EV, probably not a good idea to get this system unless you, you know, test it first somewhere else. But yeah, you might have issues. Tesla vehicles, they said most Tesla vehicles tested perform very well. There was only a couple that would cut off after approximately five minutes. And I don't know why that happened. But in my experience, from what I've heard from Tesla owners here in Australia, it's worked for everyone who's actually tried to get it to work. So I think this is, will, will be game changing. And the big reason I think it will, and when I say game changing, I really, really mean that. The reason is because these new batteries from Cadle, these new sodium ion batteries, they will dominate the market, right? They will dominate the market. If competitors don't reveal a similar product, then they're in big trouble. But these new batteries, Cadle say, will still have 85% of their original capacity left on average after 3.6 million miles of driving. That's 5,800 kilometers. Now imagine if EVs in the future, a large percentage of them have those batteries. There'd be no reason not to use them every single day to make yourself money from the grid. And seeing as that battery is clearly gonna be mass produced very, very soon, competitors will bring out their batteries very, very soon. There's gonna be a massive change to the global grid. I honestly think all these ideas, governments keep saying, we need to triple the size of the power grids because of these hungry power stations. Yeah, I get that's a fact that these, power, these, um, these AI data stations are you know, a big problem, but I don't think household energy use will actually go up. In fact, I think it's going to go down because of this technology. Many people will embrace it. You know, at the start, there'll be just a few early adopters, but then people very quickly jump on board and they are here in Australia. Let's wait and see what happens in the United States. Guys, what are your thoughts? Would you consider doing this? Let me know in the comments below.